Hi, my name is Scott, and I'm going to talk to you about how to make a zine. Now, I know that there are about half a billion videos out there uh, that concern making zines. And uh, what I wanted to do was show you one other way to do this. Uh, you know, this doesn't discount any of the other videos that are out there, any of the other ways to do this. Uh, I think anybody who knows anything about zines knows uh, that there are many, many ways to do them. Uh, there is not really one specific kind of zine. Uh, there are many different kinds, even within different genres. Uh, there's multiple categories and they're as unique as all the individuals who create them. So none of this is discounting that, but I wanted to show you some a few things that I haven't really seen too much of in other videos. So uh, let's get started. All right, so the first things that we need are the materials. For zines, uh, there's a lot of different ways you could do this, but the most basic of materials that you need are the following. One, scissors. Two, glue, a little glue stick. Three, Sharpie. And four, paper. All right, so what we're gonna make is a master copy of a zine. So. What is a master copy? A uh, master copy is the one that you're actually gonna put on to the copier. Now, in doing this and talking about this, I'm also gonna let you know that I'm not a Luddite, but, uh, but I feel that with a lot of zines that uh, personally, as I say, personally, I get the strongest connection with the zines that really feel like human hands have touched them uh, and have created the uh, the uh, the ephemeral experience that you're going to look at when you see the zine, uh, that you're going to take this in. You know that human beings actually created this. Uh, now, I know that's the case for a lot of zines that are printed, and there's lots and lots of great publishing software out there that you could use, too. Uh, everything from, uh, you know, the Adobe programs, multiple Adobe programs, uh, to, uh, yeah, Issue and... Uh, trying to think about others, but anyway, you know, Publisher, of course, you know, many of those things. So again, not discounting any of those, uh, but the way I got into zines was uh, a long time ago before uh, a lot of the internet technology was widely available and also uh, really before uh, the access to, uh, to computers were really widely available uh, as well. So I want to show you some of this because quite often people will feel that they don't have the technology to do a zine or they can't create it because they're not around all the software or they want to know what kind of publishing program uh, to use to create it. And I just wanted to dispel all of those myths that you can create a pretty decent zine something that's readable as long as you have something to say and uh, and you have those materials there all right so uh, we'll go ahead and get started now first before we begin I wanted to show you a few zines that might help to demonstrate some of the ideas that I'm looking at when I see zines all right so uh, first off um, I'll do a little show and tell on my own uh, this is one of my first zines uh, this is a, um, this is about 20. 24 years old, uh, and uh, and interesting. Doesn't really show much age uh, in here. There's a couple of spots uh, from usage, or uh, somebody spilled something at one point on it. But nonetheless, you know, it's uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, I wanted to show you this uh, because uh, this was done with. Uh, really just with scissors and some markers. Uh, I was able to find this picture of King Kong. You see him up here. I always like that, uh, this movie. Uh, and at least the imagery in the movie. Uh, and I added the title of my zine on here. So this is pretty basic. I took the picture to the copy machine, blew it up a little bit, and then added, uh, added some... Uh, some space in here so I could write this. Uh, one of the things you want to look for in a cover is an image that is appealing but also enough space so it's not uh, so you can put your title of the zine but then also something that's uh, not too busy uh, as well. So uh, this is about 20, uh, it's about 23 years, I wrote 96 or whatever how old that is. Uh, and uh, yeah that's just one example. So um, I'm going to show you some of this too. So this is one of the things I did with the with the writing. Hopefully you can see this well. Uh, and uh, this was done on a typewriter uh, back then. And again, I did that, you know, not to, you know, for any kind of statement, more just because uh, typewriters were accessible and I knew how to use those versus the computers at that time. Uh, but, but if you notice, what I did though was there's a picture in the background 
uh, so I got an image. I'm trying to look at what that image is. So it looks like an image of a uh, of a Soviet sailor. I don't know if you can see him over there, retired veteran, you know, from the Soviet Union. Uh, and I went ahead and cut the. Uh, I printed up the paper that I was writing my introduction. Uh, and then I cut all the edges out. And the reason I did that instead of just going straight down uh, in a big square is because it adds a little bit more to it. Uh, I got a little bit better at this as the years went on, but uh, but being able to have just like a little bit of space uh, between this allows for the reader to be able to uh, to uh, to engage with the writing a little better. Uh, it's part of the rhetoric, the visual rhetoric that goes along with scenes. Uh, and it's also uh, not, it's fair to call this a multi multimedia uh, art piece. Not saying that my work is art, but I'm just saying in general, that's would be the case. Uh, if you take a look on here in the inside too, I did the same thing with this as well. And I wanted to show you this because uh, if you're without uh, typewriters, you're out without computers, you don't really need any of that. All you need is just a little bit of the imagery. Um, and if you can find the right picture, then that might be sufficient. Uh, I did this, of course, by hand. Uh, and that might have been a little bit of a choice, but also uh, that was, um, yeah, I just thought that it looked a little bit better. And again, I like the idea of the zines having the human touch to them. Uh, there's a big difference between look, looking at a blog or looking at an easy versus uh, looking at something physical. And I think one of the reasons why people like the physical zines is because they like the real world. It's one of the reasons why zines have had a large resurgence over the past year, past few years. Um, I'll show you a couple other little examples. So um, here's another one here. Uh, this is a true story. It's actually a very sad story, but. Um, but a true story. I did this in typical punk rock font, punk rock uh, or um, you know, ransom note style, uh, where I just found uh, some magazines and cut out the letters. And luckily I had enough letters to spell out what I was trying to spell in that way. Uh, so that's one of the basic ways, one of the most easiest ways for you to do a title uh, for any kind of article. They don't always have to go at the top. And as you can see here, this one is uh, done with uh, with a marker or sharpie, and the images are just again cut and paste uh, connected to that. But I did the same thing with the background images, and let me see if there's anything better in here. And then I had this other one too. Uh, this is about a friend's band, and there's a little bit of a scene report uh, that I did at that time. Uh, some shows that I saw, and then I just drew the picture of the band. I used that Simpson style and had this image of the band itself. Uh, but I drew this picture because I wanted it to uh, just add a little bit more of the me uh, in the writing itself. So there's a lot of things that you could do. I didn't find this on the internet. I just uh, knew what the Simpsons looked like and drew the pictures, you know, accordingly, and then added uh, some of my friends uh, in that picture from that band uh, back in the 1990s. So otherwise. You know, I got a lot of other uh, images and pictures uh, from here. Uh, I'll do this last one here. Uh, this is a little bit more of what I was talking about. I kind of like the style a little bit better where there's space between uh, the paragraphs. I did this because each one of these was different. These are um, uh, record reviews. Uh, here are some of the bands you might know. Free Kitten, Blunt, uh, Johnny Fire Eater, and Black Milk. Uh, that was a, there's another band called Black Milk now, but a different band from back in uh, the 90s, Corpus Christi. Texas. Uh, so anyway, so I have a little bit of this imagery uh, that I did it here. So I wanted to show you that. Uh, a couple other ones as well. Uh, this one here is Loserdom. This is from Ireland. Uh, and uh, while he does a bit of the mix between the uh, the copier images, but he also has, I'm sorry, the copier, the, um, the computer print, you know, but then he also has his own comics in here. So as you can see with the comics, that these are all hand-drawn, uh, you know, of course, as most comics are, uh, but also the wording, the lettering. So you shouldn't feel that you can't do a, a project like this just because you don't have the materials. Again, really, all you need for this is just the marker and pen uh, and paper marker, pen, paper, uh, scissors, uh, some glue, and just a little bit of uh, artistic imagination. Uh, this is a really good one as well. Uh, women's self-defense, uh, stories and strategies of survival. And if you can notice this in the cover, the cover is obviously uh, a cartoon, but it's a uh, comic, uh, but it's also uh, done by hand. Uh, all the images, everything from the writing to the style. It's not a font, you know, but human hands. And same thing with this here. Uh, one of the ways that this person probably did this was either they had a piece of black paper or kept the copy machine open, let it run once, uh, and then all the uses up all the toners. No copier ever, copy store ever likes you doing that, but you know it's an easy way to get some black paper. Uh, but did that and then gives it a little bit of background uh, in here to add uh, some uh, a bit of a break and then also an emphasis. It's almost like underlining uh, the 
writing. So, so forgive this little visual rhetoric uh, class. And um, it's also another way uh, that this was done too. So we have between uh, spaces between the stories, the handwritten title. I, I like handwritten titles, even when the articles are printed up in, um, you know, just printed up uh, in the standard computer style. And then here's one of the most famous ones. Uh, this is Doris uh, by uh, Cindy Crabb. Uh, and if you look at this, though, even though, um, you know, surely she knows how to use a copier. She was, uh, I think at this point, she was either finishing up her master's degree uh, or it was, um, yeah, or it was, uh, had just received it, something like that in grad school. Uh, that anybody knows uh, when you're in college, you got to write lots and lots of papers and they rarely take anything handwritten or typed up in some kind of interesting way. So, uh, but uh, apparently Cindy really liked the font uh, that she was using. She knew what she liked. Uh, and uh, she went ahead and stuck with this. I say font, I mean, it's a typewriter, and you can tell clearly that this is a typewriter by the mistakes, uh, uh, the typos, and then the X's over there and the ways that uh, she corrected them. But take a look at this, though. Uh, if you see right up here in the introduction, uh, of course, these are handwritten. These are marks uh, that she's made, uh, but then there's also a little star. So what she's done with this is uh, she's uh, taken a page that would have had blank space and then moved the blank space out and then added her own lines uh, within this piece uh, to add just a little bit more emphasis and a little bit more uh, of an interesting uh, perspective when you're looking at this. Uh, and again, you know, one of the appeals of zines is not just the writing itself, but is also the uh, the visual experience that you get uh, as you're looking at this. So uh, you see this, you know, there are comics in here, some uh, pretty basic comics uh, that she's pretty well known for, a lot of her imagery and drawings. Uh, but conversations in here, uh, this one here is with uh, uh, with the political prisoner, uh, very detailed, uh, very interesting conversation. And... Uh, with that, you know, that we see some uh, some pretty heavy writing and subject matter uh, within a very small uh, context. And it's one of the things I like about zines in the medium is that you can find all sorts of stuff. Uh, everything from uh, from politics to uh, to personal stories, really, really heavy personal stories, really funny stuff, too. Uh, so lots of things within uh, the medium. But uh, that's why I wanted to focus on those ones. Uh, in particular, and just how that's created. So that's for my show and tell, and let's actually do a little creation. So going back to our tools of the trade, these are, again, the basic uh, tools. We have scissors to cut and glue to paste. I know a lot of people know the cut and paste images when you click on the button and you drag something from here to there, you know, but of course, this is where it all begins, uh, so that's where it will begin. So one of the first things that you need to do is try and figure out what size zine you're gonna use. Uh, so I have here an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, uh, and this is the standard uh, size for a zine, not usually in this long format, but usually half size. This is called digest size, uh, and you do this by folding the paper in half, and then you have the beginnings of your master copy. This is usually how I begin the zines uh, once I have all the writing done, uh, and I do that because I need to see what it's gonna look like in a layout format. Uh, one of the things I found is that nearly every time I create a zine, that if I have writing in there and I plan out for how long it's gonna be, it's almost always either too long or too short. Uh, the most important thing to remember is that when you're doing a zine in any kind of format like this and you're doing physically uh, on the paper itself and not through a publishing program, uh, that you need to be aware that, uh, that everything has to be uh, uh, divided by fours, uh, so or multiplied by fours. Uh, so if this is uh, three, uh, four sheets of paper, then that means I have 16 pages. Uh, 16 pages might be the front cover, the back cover, and then uh, the inside and outside. So standard format for me, at least, you know, would be I'd have the cover here, the back cover there, uh, an introduction that could be one and a half to two pages, something like that. Uh, and then in here I have the content. So I'd have to be able to make sure that when I have content, that I have content for all of the pages in here. Uh, and uh, it's very rare that I have a zine where I get to the end and realize, hey, I just did everything perfect and right. Usually what happens is I get to the end and realize, oh, I have three blank pages. Uh, and that's awkward uh, to have the three blank pages. So what do you do? Uh, you know, some people just put that notes at the end. I was thinking it's a little busted, but uh, but it's uh, what you have to do sometimes. Uh, so what I like to do is try and figure out something else I can put in there. It might mean shifting around pages and it becomes annoying, but the best thing to do is to, for the best of your ability, to the best of your ability, is try and plan for that ahead of time. 
Now, another one of my favorite format sizes is the half size. So as you can imagine, this is the digest size, folded in half. So you get it folded in half, and then you can do a couple different things with this. So uh, you can get the paper itself and then just cut it in half, and then you have two. It makes it easier to copy, at least once you have a master copy. Uh, you have to make another one, of course, you know, back inside, and then cut through. But nonetheless, uh, this is the basic one. All right, so let's look at this one copy I want to do. All right, so this is the beginning of my zine called Tales from the COVID. All right, so as you can see, this is very basic. All I needed was just a marker and paper to do this. Kind of sufficient, but let's see what happens when we add a little cut and paste. All right, so I dug around my house and I found a couple of magazines to use for some of the cut and paste. And this is what I've come up with. Tales from the COVID. So unfortunately, the paper is a little bent, so it's not the best, but I just wanted to give you an example. Uh, so Tales from the COVID, much better than my previous one. Feel free to click back just a couple seconds and see which one do you like better, this one or this one. But don't tell me because it'll break my heart. So now the next step, of course, is content. So the content is going to be the most important thing in the world. Uh, Aaron Commonbus did a really good piece a couple of years back, A Call to Arms, uh, that was really challenging people to not put out crappy zines, and I am 100% behind that. So I think uh, the problem with, uh, with so many zines being out there is that there can be, you know, of course, um, there can be a lot of crappy zines. But uh, that said... Uh, all my zines were crappy for the first four, five, six, seven issues. And uh, then after that, you know, they started to get better, at least to me. Uh, they started to get better. I look at my early ones and I'm pretty embarrassed by those. And I assume most people's first scenes uh, are a little busted at the beginning. And it's just because you're learning the ropes. And just like anything else, you get better and better at it the more that you do it. Uh, so, um, so with that said, I think it's important when we're putting things out there uh, for zines, uh, putting uh, zines out there into the world, that when people come across them, they see them in bookstores, they see them in record stores, that they see really good quality products, uh, that you spent time with it, you've edited the work, that you've uh, spent a lot of uh, emotional time with it, so you know exactly what you're trying to say. Uh, so when it's out there, it's not just first thought, best thought. Uh, sometimes that works, you know, maybe for some of the beat generation that worked, but um, that's debatable. Uh, and I think that a, a heavily revised version of whatever your work is is probably a lot better uh, in the end. People, you want to have something that other people want to read, uh, not just something that you can instantly create. Uh, that's my opinion, though, you know, but part of it is just the process itself, too. So it's fun to just to play around with the process. Uh, so let me get off my high horse, you know, and then come back down. Uh, and uh, I always applaud the effort. Uh, that said, I also feel that it has to be good, uh, too. So try your best uh, to make it good, however you see that uh, to be. So let me show you a busted one that I just made, all right, after talking about not having crappy zines. Boop. All right, so here it is, and it just says, thank you for picking this, uh, this zine up. This issue is a one-off, uh, can I read my own handwriting, one-off example of how to make the most basic, and this is definitely basic, basic, uh, basic zine. Uh, with what you have around you, you can make something important. All right, so we see this. All right, this is okay, you know, but let's see what happens if we just change it around just a little bit. Now, I wanted to show you this. So this is the exact same thing. And as you can see, there's a big difference. Uh, what I did was I found a copy of Smithsonian uh, laying around the house, uh, the magazine, and I took some pictures. I don't know if you could see it well, but this is a woman at the Grand Canyon. Uh, and another picture of the Grand Canyon right there. Uh, and I, yeah, just cut out all the words and changed it around. So you can judge for yourself whether you think it looks better or not. Uh, you know, I think uh, art is often the eye of the beholder. But what I did was I started off with a really basic zine where all I said was tales from the COVID uh, and wrote all the stuff right here and I changed it around and then added a little panache to it. So here's my last words of advice. Just do it. Uh, with this, uh, that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to show you. I know it's really basic as far as the cut and pasting and probably didn't need a 20 minute video to do all that, but uh, I just, I was inspired to do this because uh, 
all the number of videos and workshops and things I've seen recently uh, where we talk about different publishing software and different ways to create these uh, zines. And, uh, and I think that's great, you know, for people who are really into that stuff, you know, all the graphic designers and I have nothing at all against any of that. But, uh, but for me personally, when I see it, then it just makes me feel that, uh, that a lot of that stuff is just out of my uh, hands. And one of the things I've always appreciated about zines is the, uh, the democratization of this media. Uh, you know, I think of uh, Jello Biafra's uh, famous words, uh, don't hate the media, become the media. Uh, and I think that zines have a, uh, the potential, you know, to always do that, uh, to be able to create something that's clearly handmade, that's clearly done by a human being, uh, and can get a strong message across. Uh, all the other programs, you know, they certainly can do that, but uh, I want people to feel that when uh, you know, if you have something to say that you don't need to have a fancy computer, you don't have to have any other software, you don't need to have anything else to be able to do it. All you need to have is the ability to put all this together. Now, there's a couple, uh, there uh, are a couple, uh, you know, life hacks or some uh, pro tips that I could give you along the way. You know, some of the problems with this might be that the images are maybe a little too dark to copy, so you might not be able to see any of that stuff when you copy. Uh, this picture is great in color, but might not look as well in black and white, but those are things that you learn, you know, as you go along uh, with this. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, to, you know, to reassure you, those who might feel that you might not have the abilities to put together a zine, that I did this in just a few minutes. I've been doing it for a while, but, uh, but this doesn't take much skills. And even when I did my first one, that one I showed you a few minutes ago, you know, it's basically the same thing, you know, the same thing, uh, several years, uh, several years years different. The only changes in any of the stuff that I've done with scenes is I've learned how to do a few more uh, computer tricks, but uh, but nothing really fancy. So anyway, uh, that's my video. That's my tutorial. And I wanted to just offer that as a possibility in the many, many possible ways that you can create scenes. All right. Hope you have a great day and thanks a lot for watching.